All right, so what we're going to start to explore is the demand curve and what's behind the demand curve. Um, so to do this, we need to study consumption possibilities and utility maximization. So let's get to it. We're going to start off with the idea of consumption possibilities. Now that may sound familiar. We've studied production possibilities earlier in the class. Well, this is a very similar concept. Um, with consumption possibilities, we're looking at the different possible combinations of consumption for a household given a set budget. It's a very simple idea. We're not going to go into a lot of depth. Um, it's pretty straightforward. <clears throat> Some textbooks will actually go into something called a budget line. The budget line takes two different products um, and the price of each product and puts it on a graph like you would see at Production Possibilities Frontier. Um, the budget, of course, restricts you. We're not going to worry about this budget line. It is not something that's going to be found on the AP exam. However, if you refer to your textbook in the module, uh, you will be able to take a look at a budget line and what that is. The budget line is just the graphical depiction of consumption possibilities. Again, we're not really going to sweat this. However, an old idea that we do need to keep in mind is opportunity cost. Um, and the thing that we want to consider with opportunity cost in this context is really relative price. We're going to be studying two different products that are normally consumed, the price of each product and the budget given. And what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to assess the relative price of one item in terms of another good. We have to be able to calculate this. It's actually a very simple process to do. For example, if gum costs 50 cents a pack and water is a dollar a bottle, you take a look at the relative price. Two units of gum equals one unit of water given the price. One unit of water equals a half a unit of gum. Um, I'm sorry, one unit of water equals two units of gum. One unit of gum equals a half a unit of water. And it's just taking a look at these prices and seeing the relative price to one another. All right, pretty simple. So uh, that is your consumption possibilities in a nutshell. Now we move on to the idea of utility, which will build upon those very basic ideas and definitions. Ultimately, we have to remember that utility is satisfaction, not usefulness. We're going to be paying attention to total utility and marginal utility. And what we're going to attempt to do is to quantify satisfaction. Interesting task. All right, so the goal here, we want to understand utility maximization, utility maximization rule, or maximizing utility. Remember, utility here, utility, 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 represents satisfaction. So we're going to maximize our satisfaction. And the formula that we need to know is mu over p of one product, x, needs to equal mu over p of y, a second product. Now, if we were to consider, you know, the, the models we're going to be using, we're only going to be using two products. However, if we look at reality, what we're trying to do is have our marginal utility over price of one product equal marginal utility over price of a second product equals marginal utility over price of a third product over equals a fourth product, fifth product, sixth product. We take a look at all the different products we buy using our budget and we want the marginal utility over price to equalize, to maximize our total levels of satisfaction or utility. So, in our examples, we're going to only be paying attention to two products. Again, economic model, simplified model, there you have it. So questions that we want to pay attention to. Uh, what happens to total utility as consumption increases? As you consume more and more and more of an item, what happens to your levels of satisfaction? We also want to find out what happens to marginal utility as consumption increases. In the end, there's a rule, there's a law that we have to memorize. And it is the law of diminishing utility or the law of diminishing marginal utility. This law, the name itself, should give you a good clue to the answer to the second question. All right, so let's take a look. How do we measure this stuff? Well, this is when we get into math. What we're going to do is we're going to take a look at our two products, water and gum. 
Water costs a dollar a bottle. Gum costs 50 cents a bottle. Our budget is four dollars. So we got a price, we got a price, and we have a budget. Those are all items we need to keep in mind. So, taking a look at water. Quantity represents the levels of consumption. Total utility represents the total satisfaction gained as I continue to consume all of these products. So when I consume zero water, I get zero satisfaction units. When I consume the first bottle of water, I get 15 levels of satisfaction. Now these numbers, total utility, will always be provided for you by the AP exam people. You will not have to come up with these numbers. Remember, these numbers represent quantifying satisfaction. So they're not going to ask you to do that quantification. You'll, um, they will provide that for you. All right. When I consume two bottles of water, so I'm on my second bottle of water here, I have the 15 units of satisfaction from the first bottle plus the units of satisfaction I gained from the second bottle, which equals 27 units of satisfaction, or sometimes they call it utils, U-T-I-L-S. When I consume the third bottle, I get the 15 units from the first, the extra units from the second, plus the extra units from the third, yielding total utility of 36 units. So we can see what's happening to total utility as consumption increases. Total utility goes up as consumption increases. Um, now, it can eventually equalize. If you look over here at gum, when we hit our seventh unit of gum, we have 69 total units of utility. Our eighth unit is also 69, which means we got no extra units of satisfaction from that eighth unit. Now, can total utility actually go down and become negative? Well, here's the problem. As I continue to consume, I, the total utility represents all the levels of satisfaction I have gained from each unit of consumption. I can't go back and reverse satisfaction already gained. So total utility can level out, but we're not going to really see it go into a negative. All right, this leads us to our next level here. Um, <clears throat> what we want to do with marginal, remember marginal is a per unit assessment. So as I see my total utilities going up, marginal utility is going to be a measurement of the change in total utility as I change consumption. So as I go from zero to one bottles of water, I acquire 15 units of satisfaction. So my marginal utility of the first unit is 15. As I go from my first bottle of water, oops, as I go from my first bottle of water to my second bottle of water, I'm going to gain an extra, what, 12 units of satisfaction. It is the change of 15 to 27 as I go from 1 to 2. So my marginal utility is 12, because that's the change in total utility. As I go from my second bottle of water to my third bottle of water, I'm going to see yet another change. So I want to measure the change in total utility going from one to the next. So as I go from my second bottle of water to my third, nine additional units of satisfaction are gained. And if we go from 36 to 42, 6, 42 to 47, 5, 47 to 51 is 4. So my fourth bottle yielded six units of utility, my fifth bottle yielded fifth, five uh, units of utility, and so on. What I would suggest you do at this point is to pause the video and calculate for gum the marginal utility of each level of consumption, which is a matter of going from 0 to 1, which means that's your change in total utility, from 1 to 2, which means that's the change in your total utility, etc. So pause the video and go ahead and do that. Alrighty then, this is what you should have gotten. 32, 16, and there's the rest of the column. Okay, 
if you need to rewind the video to see, um, take the time to rewind the video and do this again if necessary. All right, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take a look at marginal utility over price. That's simple. You're going to take your marginal utility and the price tag of the product, and you're going to put the utility over the price. So 15 over 1, I can't do this with the mouse, 15 over 1 is 15. 12 over 1, of course, is 12. 9 over 1 is 9. Now, where am I getting the numbers from? The 1 is the price of water. The 15, 12, 9 is the marginal utility. So MU over P is this over the price of the product. And again, you can go through and calculate what's going on here. Over here with gum, same situation. What you're going to do is you're going to take marginal utility of 32 and you're going to put it over the price of gum, which is 50 cents, 0.5 and you're going to calculate. When you do that, you get 64. 16 over 0.5 is 32. 8 over 5, 0.5, 6 over 0.5, and so on. So you get your marginal utility over price. Okay. Now that we have done that, what we want to do is we want to identify, we want to go back to our marginal uh, um, or, uh, I'm sorry, uh, marginal utility or the, the utility maximizing rule, utility maximizing rule. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to find where MU over P of water equals MU over P of gum. We're going to see that this happens in two different places. It's going to happen, <clears throat> it's going to happen at six units of water and six units of gum. Okay, so here's your units of gum, here's your units of water, MU over P is 4, MU over P is 4, they match up here. We also see that MU over P being 12 here, MU over P being 12 here, that's 4 units of gum and 2 units of water. So they match up in two different locations. So what we want to do is we want to take a look at which location or which matchup is what we need. Well, this is when the budget comes into play. I have $4 to work with. As a result of that, let me go back to this. As a result of that, I have to decide which combination can I afford. Four gum at 50 cents is $2. Two water at a dollar is $2. Two plus two is four. I can do this combination. Six water, six gum is well above my budget. Can't do it. Therefore, I maximize utility with two water and four gum. So that's the combination I want to choose. I maximize utility at two water, four gum. Okay, a couple things to keep in mind. First of all, remember we're maximizing utility. What that's going to mean for us is if we take a look at every possible combination affordable by our budget, and we add the total utility of all of those combinations, we're going to find the highest total utility at the 2-4 combination that we have calculated. For example, if I did four water at a dollar each, which means zero gum because my budget is four dollars, four units of water gives me 42 total units of satisfaction. Uh, that is lower than if I added the 27 and the 62 from my utility maximizing combination. Another example we can consider here, if we took a look at, say, three units of water, which gives us 36 total utility, and two units of gum, which gives us 48 utility, that's still my $4 budget. I can afford that. If you add 36 and 48, that number is less than if I added 27 and 62. So if I'm going to maximize utility, it's the two units of water and the four units of gum that maximizes my total utility. That is still the highest combination. Eight gum, zero water, which I can do with my budget. 69 is less than the 62 plus 27. So utility maximization is what we're striving for.
there you go.